Uh, again, I'd like to thank uh, Sergio and Ahmed for inviting me here to this meeting. And my talk is on uh, prophylactic neurectomy to reduce the rate of uh, post hernia or chronic pain. Chronic pain is the most serious long term co complication of inguinal hernia repair. And depends on how you measure it in terms of what percentage of your patients are going to have it. If you send patients out a questionnaire uh, that they can fill out in their own home, about a third of patients will report chronic pain. If you ask patients at clinic, about 10% will say they have pain of some sort. And about 3% of the group will have severe pain. If you rely solely on those that attend a pain clinic, about 1% of patients will attend a pain clinic. There are only three randomized controlled trials in this area of prophylactic neurectomy, and all look at a division and partial resection of the iliunguinal nerve compared with preservation. The first trial is a very small trial by Ravi Chandran, published in the British Journal of Surgery in 2000. And what they did is they looked at patients with bilateral inguinal hernias, randomizing them to division or preservation. One of the real problems with this is that in terms of stratification, they had to stratify patients in terms of whether they were symptomatic or not. So as a patient, you could end up with having your ilinguinal nerve divided on both sides or indeed preserved on both sides. So interpretation of this study for a number of reasons is difficult. One, the patient numbers are very small and two, the method of randomization is certainly not ideal. Patients have a visual analog pain scale measured at one month and six months, and were all assessed on uh, pain and cessation, and the trial was a double-blind randomized clinical trial. And this is what they found, essentially no difference. And I guess that's not really surprising, given the size of the study and the way the study was set up. Uh, so you really couldn't draw very much conclusions from, from, from that, but at least it was the first randomized trial in the literature trying to answer this question. The second trial was that by Niu and his associates in the Chinese University of Hong Kong. This is a much more detailed trial and what we call an explanatory randomized control trial as opposed to a pragmatic trial. They randomized 100 patients uh, to division or preservation of the ilinguinal nerve and again, they measured pain on a four-pine scale, whether there was none, mild, moderate, or severe. And it was measured on coughing, walking three flights of stairs, and cycling for 10 minutes at one and six months. Touch and pain sensation were also assessed, and they also had a Chinese version of the short form 36, uh, which patients were assessed at six months and one year. Now, they showed quite a difference in the patients on cycling and walking who had their nerve uh, divided in favor of division of the nerve. The interesting thing about this is, of course, is that when you actually look at it, it from a pragmatic point of view, there was no difference in pain during normal daily activities between the groups and no difference in pain and coughing. So I guess the results are somewhat artificial. Uh, in that normally we wouldn't ask our pains, patients when they come back to clinic to uh, go cycling or, or walking up the stairs before we assess them in terms of for recurrence and chronic pain. Interestingly, at one month there was absolutely no difference in patients in this study and also interesting I find is that there was no difference in numbness or sensory changes between the groups which might suggest that in the so-called control group, uh, nerve injuries or nerve problems or nerve, nerves were ligated that weren't identified. And finally, the largest randomized clinical trial, and this is certainly a very pragmatic trial, and it's also been mentioned, and this is from Naples, uh, 813 patients with a primary inguinal hernia, again, pain on a four-pine scale at one month, six months, and a year, and patients were followed up by telephone call and sensory loss to light, light touch and pain. 
I think this is certainly very much like what we see in terms of the number of patients at six months or a year that will complain of pain, in that about a third of their patients had pain, but no difference between the groups. And if you actually look back at Mu's study, when they're assessing the same thing, again, no difference in terms of chronic pain in relation to normal daily activities. Significant differences, as you can imagine, against loss of sensation, but rates of numbness very low uh, for patients that have had the ileoingunal nerve divided, and no significant differences between the groups.